Hi, I'm Lizzie and thank you for watching. Today we are going to be learning how to make what is, in my opinion, the best flapjacks. I have been making these flapjacks for years and years. They're the ones all of my friends absolutely love. So let's get started. So to start with, you're gonna need some dark brown sugar. I've got six ounces of dark brown sugar, which is about 150 grams. I've got two generous tablespoons of golden syrup and I've got 250 grams of butter, which is eight ounces. I'm gonna pop them all into a pan and put these over a heat to melt. I don't want them to boil. I don't want to start boiling up the sugar in the golden syrup and butter. I just want them to all melt nicely. So I'll get them all in here. Okay, so I have now got, this pan's a little bit hot, uh, my butter and sugar and golden syrup all nicely melted. Can you see that properly? I haven't let it boil because I don't, I don't want that to happen. I just want it to melt nicely. And I'm just gonna add all of my dry ingredients to it. Now I've got here five ounces of self-raising flour, which is 125 grams. I'm just gonna put that in first. And then I've got the same of oats, 125 grams or five ounces, depending which way you like to work, and the same of desiccated coconut. They are my three main dry ingredients, along with half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Okay, so I've got all of those in. I'm just gonna give that a little mix. So I've given that a little mix. And then this is the point where you can add whatever you like. So in my house and my family, we really like dried apricots, sultanas, raisins, prunes, medjool dates, anything like that. And I add more than the original recipe would have said that was my family recipe. So I add six ounces, which is about 150 grams. And just topple that in, get it all in and give it a really good mix. You want all of this to be really evenly distributed. So I've got that now all there already. So I've got here a be probably be classed as like a tray baked tin. So I'm just going to pop this in here. Now you can start by just pushing it around with your spatula here. If you find that whatever you're pushing it around with, like this is quite a good surface on the spatula to push it with. But if your flapjack is sticking to whatever spoon or utensil you're using, if you just wet your hands so they're just like damp, not so they're dripping, the cold, wet hand will actually spread the flapjack out really evenly for you. So I've got them there, nice and flat, all ready to go in the oven. So I've got a preheated oven at 160, and that's a fan oven. If you're not using a fan oven, I'd put it about 170. And I'm gonna give this 10 to 12 minutes. Now, I'll show you when I take it out, but you want it to be so the middle is still wobbly. It's cooked and golden on top, but the middle's still wobbly. It will continue to cook once you take it out of the oven. If you leave it in the oven and you think, oh no, it's a bit wobbly, I'll just leave it five minutes longer, what will happen is you'll take it out and it will start to carry on cooking after you've taken it out and you'll have rock solid flapjack. So I'll just pop this in the oven and I'll take that out in about 10 minutes time. So these have been in the oven for 12 minutes and I've just taken them out. I don't wanna lift them up too much. So they're still, I don't know if you can see that or not, when I touch it, there's a little bit of a wobble but they're nice and golden on top. They will carry on cooking for, for a bit longer. So just set them aside, let them cool in their baking tin and they will be absolutely delicious. Okay, so my flapjacks, as you can see, they have sunk a little bit, which is fine. They've been, they chilled in the tin for about two or three hours until they were set enough for me to be able to lift them up with the baking parchment and take them out of the tin. And now that's been cooling until it's completely cold, which was another hour or two. So to finish them off, I've got about 75 grams of dark chocolate and the same of white chocolate melted. And I'm gonna marble them across my flapjacks. You don't have to do this if you don't like to have chocolate on your flapjacks, but I personally think that this really finishes them off nicely. So just with a teaspoon, zigzagging up and down, this is quite a lot of chocolate for this size batch of flapjacks, but I don't mind that at all. Um, I like them with a lot of chocolate on. If you're making these at Christmas or if you, or any time really, but they're really nice at Christmas if you put glacé cherries, pistachio nuts, uh, walnuts, macadamia nuts, anything like that in them, 
as well, along with your, when you weigh out your fruit, if you incorporate some nuts into them as well, that's really nice. So I've got some white chocolate on there. And then I'm just gonna put my, mmm, that looks so nice, dark chocolate over the top. You, you find that the white chocolate, you don't need very much of the dark over the white for it to almost cover it. So you can go back over with white again over the top if you feel it needs it. I think actually that's probably enough. I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna feather these. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna do lines all the way up one way. And then lines all the way back down in between the ones where you've done the line up. Just so it gives it a nice finish like that. Now this will need to set in the fridge for about an hour until all the chocolate's set and then you can cut them up and have them or you can just cut them up and have them now. I'm gonna show you how nice these are by just cutting into a bit here and showing this up. And then look, they are really lovely and gooey and moist and absolutely delicious. So I'm pretty sure your friends will like these. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do like and subscribe by clicking the link, which will hopefully come up and I will see you again soon.